Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. This is so exciting. My name is Gideon and I'm also known as Gideon Slide and I'm here to be your creative effect coach. So grab your canvas, grab your paints and your art journal and join me in my studio as I show you how profound it can be in your life if you allow some space to be creative. So join me now as I show you how. Hello everybody and welcome to my studio and to my channel. It is me Gideon, also known as Gideon Slide, and today we're going to continue with our creative prompts and I guess that you can guess what we are doing. <laughs> we are going to be playing with the color purple and we're going to explore some organic shapes. So as I get into one of my previous um, little violet and purple uh, art journals, I did want to just share with you a little bit about the color purple. Purple is the most powerful visible wavelength out of all of the colors of the rainbow. And purple can symbolize many things, but to sum it up in a few words, purple represents strength, transformation, power and royalty and for today we're going to explore this amazing color and we're going to play around with some organic shapes in our journal and uh, this is going to be quite exciting so without further ado I want you to get out your journal and we're gonna gonna explore some organic shapes in our journal but before we get into that what exactly is an organic shape so I thought I would just clarify so that you guys know exactly how to explore going forward so up until now we've really been working with geometric shapes now geometric shapes is things like a triangle a square rectangle, a circle, a diamond, that kind of thing. So it's very primary in shapes. We can also add the little cross that we did a few weeks back as well because it's a combination of these shapes. So what would an organic shape look like? Right, an organic shape is something that you find in nature that's a little bit more rounded in shape. Take your hand for example. It's not any of these shapes, is it? You can obviously simply simplify it down to these shapes, but a hand would be something that looks like this if you just simplify it, you know? So this would go through as an organic shape. So another thing that you can do is just Google and find organic shapes and see what that would look like for you. Um, you can look at mother nature outside your window and you might see a leaf shape and you can bring that into your design. That would be an organic shape. So really there should be no limitation uh, if you look at Mother Nature around you, you will find interesting shapes that you can play with. Um, it's usually a little bit more rounded and a little bit more organic and interesting, um, less planned and a little bit more in the moment. So I hope that clarifies for you guys exactly what I mean with organic shapes so that you can get into your journal and get some of these uh, shapes going 
So let's get into our journal and open a new page. This was so exciting last week playing with the blue. And now we are going to go and get into our purples and violets. So I want you to get out all of your art supplies and see how many various shades and elements of purple and violet you already have in your studio and bring those art supplies out and let's start playing. So I'm thinking once again I like to continue as a design principle this whole idea of working over a double page and exploring a positive and a negative shape in my exercise for the day. So if you're new to my channel, hello everyone, welcome again. Uh, please drop me a comment, tell me where you are watching this episode from and my big question to everyone today is do you love purple? Yes or no? But go a little bit deeper and explore the reason why you like it. Do you like the color purple because it's your favorite color and you always like to play with it or no it's not your favorite color and um, why maybe you were traumatized in a purple room or maybe you just don't like the vibration of the color purple something triggers within you so I always think it is a very good idea to explore the reasons why we don't like a particular color and maybe another way to do that is to figure out if you only uh, detest or is adverse to a particular shade of purple maybe you like the lavender color a lot more but don't particularly like a dark color so there's various ways that you can play and explore a particular color but do try to go a little bit deeper and find out more about why it is that you do or don't like a particular shape. Right, so I think this is a morphic uh, organic kind of shape that we can play with and see where it will take us. So I'd like to just start here with a uh, bit of line work and just activate my page and create some contrast and texture that we can color in and play with so talking about coloring in i did bring my pencils here let's try some of these water soluble um, oil pastels from one of march and see where that will take us i haven't really explored the water soluble part of it a lot i did see that it is possible so i think this might be a good place to start with that and see where it takes us so i hope you guys have been enjoying uh, what i'm offering for you guys in uh, this creative jumpstart class i just spent some time on facebook with my facebook family and uh, we started exploring this um, color and shape and uh, in our little creative journals so if you want to know what I'm talking about you can just uh, go onto my YouTube channel playlists and discover the creative jumpstart playlist there should be five episodes there and through um, a five week process we explored how to jumpstart your creativity and I also like in the first episode explored the number of things that um, keeps us from getting into a creative practice so maybe you one of those individuals that are ready to begin a creative practice but there's a big but in the way as usual uh, people say things like, I don't have time, I'm too busy, life is too hectic. But you know what, if you explore that a little bit deeper, there's obviously some kind of expectation or idea around the creative practice that it involves a lot of time and a lot of dedication to really uh, benefit out of it. 
I like to say no, not necessarily. I think that, um, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes per day can be an effective um, period of time to get into a practice. So um, you don't need a lot of time. You don't have to spend hours every day in your journal. So that's another reason why I like to play with a little journal like this. And this is just an A5 Montmartre sketching journal. And um, I like it because the page isn't that big. I even use two pages to not limit myself. And uh, I see what I can do in you know 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And for that matter, you can continue to add um, to your page every day five minutes at a time you know so you don't have to spend hours every day maybe it's just 10 minutes a day or maybe it's a half an hour a week or two hours a month that kind of thing so do see how you can activate your creative heart and your creative practice by dedicating some time and getting into your practice and that's the whole reason why I created these creative prompts for you guys so that there is something for you to focus on and um, really maximize your time that you have in the studio and not waste too much time on um, thinking out ideas and trying something new. Now I'm going to play with my acrylic drawing ink. This is her dark in purple so it's quite dark and intense. And I think we need a little bit of a dark background um, in this exercise to get us going. And like you guys know, I like to sort of continue to play on my page afterwards. And um, I will add a photograph of the complete page at the end of this video. So do drop me a comment, tell me where you're watching from and what do you guys like to do to, you know, activate your creative heart and what is your favorite medium that you like to play with? Do you like multimedia like me? I'm just really always so inspired when I um, discover new mediums and see what it can do for me and see what it does and of course i actually like all the colors of the rainbow um, there's not a lot of color that i don't like i think in the beginning when i started my creative journey i would prefer to work in blues greens and violets and um, pinks you know i avoided colors like orange yellow and red they just were too i don't know lower in vibration i don't know what the reason originally was but in becoming a creative coach i discovered that you know we as people tend to um sort of gravitate towards colors that's our favorite because it makes us feel a certain way and we tend to avoid colors that also make us feel either negative or um, angry or you experience that color in a particular way and that's why we avoid them so if you look at the color chakra system um, and you explore your energetic body that you have and you can just google this and uh, you say for example i can't stand yellow it might be interesting to note that uh, in the chakra system yellow refers to your solar plexus it refers to your personal power center so it could indicate if you really detest a color or really is adverse to it that you um, are avoiding it and that you might experience some challenges in your personal power um, you might be somebody that is constantly looking for approval outside of yourself, um, permission from other people to enjoy your life. You might even find it difficult to um, visualize uh, your future and you know have a plan 
personal goal setting, that kind of thing might be difficult for you. So it relates to your solar plexus and your personal energy center. So um, discover and explore your own sort of um, energy center through the colors. And if you really don't like a color, explore that through the chakra system and see maybe if it could speak to a person, personal block in your energy system. It might be one way to become aware of possibilities um, in your energy work with yourself. So that could be a healing tip for the day as well. Right, now that we've got some dogs down there, um, I want to switch to this color. This is a mauve and from Dala, also an acrylic drawing ink. And I think I want to just create a little bit more of a background there. So it's really fun to explore these shapes with a medium that's quick to dry and uh, interesting to explore. So let's see what happens with this mauve. It's quite intense and I like intense colors. So it gives me a bit of contrast later when I want to add something on top of these shapes. I can detect the minute I get into my right brain and I begin to um, quiet down and I concentrate more on the shapes that I'm playing with and the color I'm playing with and I find that the left brain switches off and that's usually the minute I get quiet. So I'm trying to just make these shapes work for us quickly and I don't want to prepare before the hand um, before I start recording because I want it to be immediate and live and in the moment so that you guys can get that same vibe when you are in your little art journal and it's not overly prepared and overly, overly thought of I've got some of this color left, so let's play with this little shape over the other one and see if the translucency of this color maybe offer us some interest on this page. So another thing you can do is really just use your Google search engine and just uh, search for organic shapes in the images and just see what will inspire you what jumps out at you um, in my live on Facebook I said to people look out your window if you're in the city and see if you can spot organic material around you a tree a plant a pot plant um, you know a flower a bee an insect or whatever so anything that is organic will give you ideas and inspiration i even went to the point where i said look at your hand besides the out shape you can also look at your skin and look at these little creases and little blocks and lines that is formed on your skin and that is also quite interesting when you zoom into it and observe up close what shapes you can absorb observe just on your hand alone so that is also quite exciting and when you find some shapes that you gravitate towards and want to play with that is when this whole game becomes very very exciting now one of the things that i lately um, have been doing is i really enjoy the shapes that you can see under a microscope when you for example look at a blood cell or uh, you know any cell in the body under the microscope and these organic shapes is so fascinating and beautiful to behold so that is definitely uh, an enormous resource for you to play with and explore and just see how these cellular structures give you 
an immense amount of information and um, shapes that you can mimic and try out in your art journal uh, to play with. So that is definitely one of my go-to um, things that I would like to share with you guys. Uh, if you are interested to explore various organic shapes, if you don't want to think them out uh, by yourself, then you can definitely um, just, you know, research uh, what cells look like under a microscope. Even on Pinterest, you will find quite a bit of um, artwork and photographs um, of these um, elements that could inspire you to be creative in your journal right now i'm thinking to just continue to fill in a little bit of this negative space i've got a beautiful lavender color here from uh, lucas uh, krill studio and this is called lavender and i just want to i don't even know where <laughs> Um, fill in some of this space and create a little bit more uh, place for me to play on later as I bring in a little bit more detail into this page. Now I know you guys basically see me start a page and I, I like not to make my videos too long um, because I think it can get quite boring if you are wanting to be entertained and uh, the person is droning on for hours while filling in little details. Um, so when I'm done with this um, part of the video, I like to just speed things up a little bit so that you can get to the nice juicy bits and see me bring in these organic patterns on these interesting backgrounds that I'm currently creating. Oh, I absolutely love this lavender color. So if you want to mix your own, you can just use the oxazine purple or any purple that you've got um, with a little bit more of a blue undertone and um, add a lot of white to it. And you can also even maybe add a little bit of gray to just gray it down a little bit if it's too vibrant or too pink for you. So that's a way that you can mix this lavender color yourself if you don't have it at hand in a tube. We are going to be playing with a lot of different things going forward. So if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and uh, that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I bring out a new video. And uh, I do try to come on every Monday. It is my day off. And um, that is the time that I can really spend in my studio creating content for you guys. And um, I'm very excited because I worked out a whole program for the year going ahead. So. 52 weeks of activating your creative heart is really my goal and my mission and um, I absolutely am passionate about helping adults um, develop their creative um, language and their creative um, intelligence because as we know, you know, um, in most countries art really is your own responsibility at least it's so here in South Africa so I find that when um, people are finished with primary school and you go into puberty um, we tend to want to start to compare ourselves with our peers and with everyone around us and we are also you know at school where you have to learn maths and science and all kinds of other subjects so art really becomes um, elementary in a way people view it as something elementary that you should have explored when you were in primary school when you were a toddler but the problem with that is that our right brain then sort of stagnates as well and really is dependent on outside stimulation rather than actual exercises and 
we really are a left brain society um, we focus so much on information and on data and we process a lot of information every day in fact i think our minds are tired of being overly exposed to information so having a creative practice really helps you to compartmentalize to close some apps so to speak in your brain it's like a little bit of a mental holiday it helps us to process what um, we've experienced throughout the day and if you're anything like me it really helps me to process not only what happened during the day but all of my thoughts and emotions and feelings around it and I need some quiet time to just stop my left brain a little bit from overheating <laughs> and over processing and um, you know getting into my studio and playing with my art supplies is like a, me a meditation for me it really brings me into a mindful state and I'm able to process my day, all of my emotions and everything that uh, I experienced while I am playing with my art supplies in my art journal or in a project that I'm working on. So I can really testify to the effectiveness and power of having a creative practice. So that is why I would like to challenge you guys as well. Even if you're a scientist or an accountant or a lawyer, I think even more so if you are in these kind of um, careers where you really have to use your brain and um, you have to be logic and systematic and as perfect as possible. I think going to the creative right side that is all about your senses, it's about symbology, textures, um, everything that's abstract and out there really helps your right brain to develop because if we want to solve the problems of the world we really need to start to think outside of the box we need a creative approach to resolve our problems that we are facing in our world and the left brain tends to want to always go back to what has happened in the past and how we dealt with problems in the past and I really think that that is why things take such a long time to change and to um, become better so I want to um, sort of add this information that we need to think of our problems in our world in a creative way and to find creative solutions for it and for that we need our right brains and we need to think outside of the box so if you agree with me just hit that like button and share this video with your friends and family that you think will benefit from watching this i do encourage you guys to join my creative community on facebook it is called the creative heart and uh, that is where my tribe gathers and where I share a lot of free content and information and exercises and um, it's a lot of fun to, to be surrounded with a community that will encourage you in your art and in your creation and in your creative practice and uh, so check it out I always provide a link in the description of the video to help you to quickly find my private facebook group and i like to keep it private because i believe that these are therapeutic art processes and um, i want people to feel safe and know that their work won't be shared outside of the group and we keep you know the sharing inside and the caring inside and uh, that really is a safe environment where you can come and explore and share your work with with us and you know that you will be supported and not ridiculed or um, rejected so that's really exciting also if you are interested in creative coaching i will also add a link to this video if you're interested to do the certification course with whitney freya that's definitely one of the ways that you can also um, you know, maybe expand your coaching um, tools and become a creatively fit coach 
and um, I will share my affiliate link with you guys. Um, I know that they are, they've just started with a new enrollment uh, in October. So I think the next uh, enrollment will be for um, January, February next year. And um, it would be good if you guys can check it out so that you are aware of that when enrollments open. I also have a number of creative coaching um, videos here on my channel. If you look at the playlist, you will see there's a number of them. I think the one is No Mud, No Lotus. That particular creative program that we explore at the canvas while painting a lotus flower, we um, explore how we deal with difficulty and challenges and problems in the world and in your life. And uh, are you, uh, do you tend to, you know, put your head in the sand and ignore it and just say, woe is me? Or do you, um, you know, have a go-getter attitude and say, okay, you know what, what can I learn from this experience? Um, what, what is it here to teach me or show me? And how can I expand my experience or skill sets in order to deal with this challenge or difficulty in my life? And when we take an attitude like that, we really depend on our resilience, which is naturally found within us. And we are able to transcend our difficulties and challenges if we keep our attitude in check. Because ultimately, it's the only thing we really have control over, right? It is our attitude. So if your attitude is, oh, another problem, another drama, I can't deal with this anymore. That is giving up and that is really handing your power over to the problem or challenge or difficulty. And I prefer to coach my clients to look at it rather than an opportunity uh, to see how you can grow and become stronger through that experience and through adjusting your, your attitude and be a little bit more open and ask for help where it is needed you are able to really claim your power back, rise above it and become empowered in your life. So that is the whole point of creative coaching. And we really become aware of our limiting beliefs and ideas much faster when you work in a creative exercise. Because I feel that the canvas or the paper and the mediums that you work with really dismantle your ego and your perceptions much faster because if you have a, a default attitudinal habit of either becoming frustrated or angry or give up the art and the exercise and the process will reveal that to you much faster than ordinary conventional therapy because we like to pretend that everything is okay but it is so interesting when we start playing with our art processes and we um, had a certain expectation of our art and what you know this elementary form of art should give us you know that is um, the quickest way to dismantle those masks because if it is your go-to attitude to give up and to you know feel victimized then you know you will also reveal that when you work with your art supplies and you'll say oh this isn't going my way um, i'm just wasting my time here i should really be going to do the dishes and that is a sure giveaway of an attitude that you tend to you know in autopilot go to so become aware of that and once you are aware of an attitude that is no longer serving you that's the best way or the, the moment that you are empowered to claim your power back from that perception and to deal with it in a different way and to become empowered again and I feel that is why creative coaching is so effective because it really helps us to become aware of these limitations and limiting ideas much faster um, than conventional therapy. So I'm just going to add a little bit more line work here. I quite enjoy this today. It makes me feel calm and I enjoy 
how this is just unfolding like I said I don't do a lot of preparation before the time I like to be in the moment and I like to explore the same prompt that you would without doing much research about it you know the little bit of research that I do is really just to get me going and to get us in the right direction and uh, after that it's really up to me to explore um, the prompt in a way that is organic and I quite enjoy that but I will take a photograph and I will share it with you guys as we um, go forward in this exercise so you guys get the gist of this week's prompt it is all about your purple art supplies and it's about exploring organic shapes and what those organic shapes would look like for you so there's no right or wrong again it really is up to you and how you uh, want to express yourself so um, I think I've given you enough inspiration and ideas for doing this ex on your own so do take a photograph and share it with us on the creative heart group on Facebook and I am looking forward to seeing you guys participate and share over there so do join us and um, thank you for spending this time with me and I'm looking forward to spending more time with you in the future as we begin to explore different colors and different textures, different mediums and different ways of bringing that to our art journal. So soon all of these pages in our art journal will be filled with beautiful creative exercises that you can constantly go back to and add more elements to it. Like I wanted to show you guys, last week I went to the grocery store and I grabbed some beautiful samosas that were so delicious. And they gave it to me in a bag like this that happened to have blue circles and blue was our color last week and circles was our theme. And I had to just tear out a little piece and add it as a collage to this page because it was so relevant. I also would like to show you guys um, the other little art journal that I created and that we are exploring on our Facebook channel. This is my live this morning that I did on Facebook and we created this interesting page with organic shapes and the color purple. So that is a lot of fun. Let me see where the blue page was because I actually added um, some of that blue paper to this page as well. Here we go. So, and then I just added a little bit more texture and dots to integrate this little piece of paper. So, this has been a lot of fun. So, you can see where we are headed and how much fun it can be to create your own little junk journal or even work in a traditional journal like this. So, thank you for watching. I will see you guys again next week and um, I'm looking forward to that. So, bye-bye for now.